Refraction Part 2. Now when light rays reach the interface between two materials, say the light ray passing through glass, reaching the surface of the glass, uh, some of the light is reflected from that surface and some of the light passes through the surface and is refracted. So we see that in this photo, a uh, laser beam hits the surface and some of the light is reflected back down and some of the light passes through the surface and is uh, refracted. The angle of reflection equals the angle of incidence and the angle of refraction depends on uh, the optical properties, the index of refraction of the two materials. Now, there's an interesting effect that occurs. Sometimes the refraction angle, the deflection is so large that the light ray actually is uh, traveling nearly parallel to the surface. And in fact, if we increase the angle of incidence even more, then uh, the refracted ray actually is, you can think of it as pushed back into uh, the lower material. So uh, as you see here, this uh, beam of light that is reaching the surface of air and water as we keep increasing the angle of incidence, it's uh, refracted more and more, and then eventually uh, it can't uh, be refracted anymore, and so it actually does not pass through the interface and is completely reflected. Uh, this effect is called total internal reflection. Now, total internal reflection only occurs if the light is coming through the material that has the higher index of refraction and reaches a interface with a material with lower index of refraction. In other words, we get this, for example, when light hits the surface of the water and is totally re internally reflected and none of it passes out into the air. The other situation where light is coming from air and is refracted as it passes into water, we never get total internal reflection in that case. Um, we only get a uh, partial reflection. It may be a lot of reflection, but uh, we don't get this effect called total internal reflection when it's air passing into water. Now, one of the um, uh, easy ways of seeing uh, total internal reflection is to just look up at the surface of um, a water-air interface. So here I have, on the left, I have a bowl and I dip a pencil and you can see the reflection of the pencil on the surface of the water. A similar photo here from a fish that is underwater and then uh, looking up we see a reflection of the fish on the surface of the water. The surface of the water isn't perfectly smooth so we see a little distortion uh, because of that but uh, otherwise it's a perfect uh, mirror-like reflection. Now this uh, effect also explains some properties of underwater lighting. So the rays of the sun, because of refraction, can only come in at most at about a 48 degree angle. So that means that even when the sun is very low in the sky, by refraction it appears as if it is higher in the sky. So we um, Another way of thinking of this is there's a 48 degree angle uh, that we can look up and uh, see the sky. And at larger angles, we don't see the sky looking at the surface of the water, 
we see a reflection of um, what's underwater. So you notice that natural lighting underwater has this characteristic uh, cone of light that comes down. So another uh, example that we can um, more easily observe than if you don't want to go scuba diving uh, is refraction in uh, aquariums. So in this photo we see uh, two effects. Uh, on the left we see total internal reflection on the back side of the aquarium where we see a mirror reflection of the sculpture and on the side uh, on the right side uh, the um, we see two images uh, sort of duplicated because of refraction. It uh, may be helpful to look at what the light rays are doing. So on the left side, uh, the left side of the aquarium has a mirror reflection by total internal um, reflection. And on the right side, that uh, log that's in the water, we see it both uh, through the front of the aquarium and then another distorted image on the side of the aquarium. Uh, we see both of those because the light rays uh, refract um, through those two sides. It might be easier to understand that looking at this example of a pencil underwater. So I'm going to take this uh, pencil and uh, dip it underwater and move it over uh, to the side of the bowl. Now there's two interesting refraction effects going on here. The first one is the shaft of the pencil appears to be uh, shifted. So if you look at the um, look, follow the shaft of the pencil down underwater, you see that it's shifted over towards the, the side. And this is due to just simple refraction. So light ray coming from, say, the tip of the pencil reaches the uh, edge of the bowl. It is uh, refracted as it uh, exits um, the bowl. And so it appears as if this light ray is coming from a spot which is closer to the side of the bowl. So the pencil appears to be shifted towards the side of the bowl when it's uh, underwater. Even more interesting is that as we place the tip very close to the edge of the bowl, uh, it actually disappears. So in this case, it's an example of total internal reflection. So in this case, the angle that the light ray hits is even larger. Uh, and because of that, we have total internal reflection and none of that uh, light ray is uh, seen by the observer. So uh, what I've marked here in uh, orange is the places where total internal reflection will occur for light rays uh, coming from this uh, the pencil at this location. And so for this range of viewing angles, the tip of the pencil is actually invisible. Uh, you may have noticed this in uh, aquariums. Sometimes the fish uh, disappears if it gets close to the uh, edge of the bowl. Another example of total internal reflection is the channeling, channeling of light that you see here. This laser beam is um, reflected as it passes down this uh, glass rod. Uh, this is the basis for uh, fiber optic technology. Here's another example of this uh, same effect. I have a, a laser that is passing uh, into some water and the water is uh, spurting out of a hole and I'm adjusting the water pressure to make the water spurt uh, faster or slower. But you notice that the laser beam stays inside 
of the stream of water. It's like a um, pipe of uh, water maintains that uh, laser beam uh, inside of it. A more practical application of this principle is explaining why wet surfaces tend to look darker, uh, especially diffuse wet surfaces tend to look darker uh, than similar dry surface. Well, what happens is the light rays come in, uh, they are uh, reflected at, at all different uh, angles by this uh, diffuse surface, and many of the light rays, when they try to exit back out, are striking the surface at the critical angle and they are uh, reflected back down and have to reflect off the um, bottom surface again. So uh, this trapping of the rays that they have to uh, reflect back to the uh, diffuse surface several times, every time they reflect there, there's more absorption. So when they finally make it back out, they've actually not reflected off the concrete once, but uh, multiple times, and so there's more absorption of the light, and so it appears uh, darker. Now, one more property of refraction is that uh, the deflection angle in refraction uh, varies slightly with the wavelength of light, and we know that uh, different wavelengths are perceived as different uh, colors. So um, it's not a large effect, but with the uh, right geometry, uh, you can notice a uh, significant separation of the colors of uh, white light, as you see from a, a prism uh, dispersing um, and revealing a, uh, the spectrum. So uh, to be more specific, the short wavelengths of light, which uh, is the blue side of the spectrum, those uh, refract uh, slightly more than the long wavelengths, which are the red side of the spectrum, and uh, this creates this uh, uh, separation of colors. Now, the rainbow that we see uh, in the sky is a result of this effect, so sunlight passes into water droplets there's a bit of uh, dispersion, which separates uh, the colors. The sunlight reflects off the back of the droplet, and then when it exits the other uh, side of the droplet, there's uh, more separation, more dispersion, and so we uh, see the uh, rainbow spectrum. And uh, you should notice that because of this, um, these angles are determined by the index of refraction of water, we always see these at the same angles, and we always see uh, blue on the inside rim of the rainbow and red on the outside rim of the rainbow. Now, sometimes uh, the reflection is strong enough that the light actually can reflect twice inside of a droplet, and in that case we get a second rainbow, or a double rainbow. So the um, double rainbow is uh, um, well, characterized by the fact that it's dimmer, but uh, also the colors in the secondary rainbow are reversed. So you notice that uh, the primary rainbow has blue on the inside, the secondary rainbow has uh, red on the inside. But probably even more significant is the fact that if you look carefully, you realize that the sky inside of the arc of a rainbow is brighter than the sky on the outside. This is part of the focusing effect um, due to uh, the rainbow. And when a rainbow is formed uh, and you're looking at it, the sun is always behind you, because if you remember, the sunlight has to enter the raindrops, reflect 
off the back of the raindrop and then come back to you. So the rainbow is always seen as a reflection of the sun and so the sun has to be behind you uh, when you see the rainbow. Uh, this uh, scene from Oz the Great and Powerful is particularly magical because uh, we can't have this appear in nature to have the sun appearing um, or to have a rainbow appearing in front of the sun. Uh, it would have to be um, behind and since we've never actually seen this in real life, uh, probably without even realizing it, uh, this looks exceptionally uh, magical. So in summary, at or past a critical refraction angle, all light is reflected at a surface. This is called total internal reflection. Total internal reflection only occurs if the incident light is on the side of higher index of refraction. Uh, for example, light in water, when it reflects off the surface, uh, that's a case where we can have total internal reflection. The refraction angle is slightly different for different wavelengths, i.e. colors of light, and this effect is known as uh, dispersion. And due to uh, dispersion, we uh, see rainbows, which are the result of uh, reflection inside of uh, raindrops and the resulting uh, dispersion uh, separating the uh, colors.